Hi there, my name is Julia Collins and I am a lecturer in mathematics at Edith Cowan University in Perth, Australia. I'm making this video for the Maths Buffet to tell you a bit about my background in mathematical knitting and crochet, to show you some of the things that I've made and maybe to inspire you to make some of your own mathematical knitting as well. So I was taught to knit, crochet, embroider by my two grandmothers when I was still very young. Uh, my maternal grandmother is Hungarian and she used to make the most beautiful embroidery. So I grew up in a very kind of crafting family. But then I went off to university to study mathematics and it felt like, you know, knitting and crochet and craft, that was a hobby. That was something for the weekend and maths was the job that I would do on the weekdays. And it was in the middle of my PhD when I realised that if I could knit and crochet some of the mathematical objects that I was learning about, it actually helped me to understand them better. And so I got into mathematical knitting as a way to visualise the kinds of geometric objects that I was dealing with in my PhD. And also when it came to communicating that mathematics to other people, I found that having a visual object that I could show them made explaining difficult concepts like topology uh, much, much easier. So most of my mathematical knitting is using the patterns of other people and there are some really fabulous designers out there. Um, Pat Ashforth, who is the author of the Woolly Thoughts website, is probably one of my uh, favourite people to get ideas from. Uh, like for example, she has a, a pattern for a hexaflexagon. So this is a knitted cushion that has three sides. So there's a, a yellow side there and I can flex it and find that there's a pink side and then I can flex it again and I can find that there's a green side. So that's pretty cool and the, the pattern for this is on the Woolly Thoughts website. And it turns out that the Hexa Flexa Cushion has got the structure of a three, three twisted Mobius strip. So like if you take a strip of paper and join it up so it has one, two, three half twists, then that's the structure of how this hexaflexagon is put together. And by making an object like this with your own hands, you really get to experience the structure of how it's made firsthand, which is completely different than when someone is just showing you on a screen like this. So I encourage you to go and, and have a play with, with things like that. Um, so when it comes to... Uh, something that I've designed myself. Um, I'm going to talk about something that came out of a collaboration when I worked in Edinburgh, Scotland. And I worked with a fabulous textile artist called Madeline Shepherd. And we designed a project called Botanica Mathematica, where we wanted to explore how mathematical algorithms were at the heart of how plants grow. And so uh, Madeline designed a pattern for this binary tree those of you who are computer scientists will understand the joke of why it's called a binary tree. Um, but you can see that the structure of this is that the branches of the tree split into two, and then each branch splits into two, and then that branch splits into two, and then that branch splits into two all the way up. So it's a little bit of a fiddly piece to knit because there's lots of lots of ends to weave in. But once again, going through the process of creating an object like this really highlights the mathematical structure. The fact that this is a fractal, so that at every level, at every scale, the structure is the same. You've got the idea of exponential growth, that the number of branches is doubling at each stage. Uh, the idea of indices, and we're working with powers of two. So I think this tree started with 32 stitches around the base, and the next one up that would work would be 64. It's just a fabulous project for exploring a whole bunch of different mathematical ideas, and at the end you also end up with a really cute tree that genuinely looks like a real tree. So Madeline came up with the pattern for the binary tree, and then following on from that, I was inspired to make a similar pattern for a Fibonacci tree. So with this tree, instead of every branch having, you know, um, halving in size every time, um, instead what's happening is that the size of the branches are following the Fibonacci sequence. So you may have come across this before. We start with the numbers 1 and 1, and then the next number in the sequence is the sum of the previous two. So 1 plus 1 is 2, that's the next number. Then 1 plus 2 is 3, 2 plus 3 is 5, 3 plus 5 is 8, 5 plus 8 is 13, and so on. 
This is a very uh, famous sequence of numbers. I'll let you go and, and Google for it if you haven't come across it before. But you can make a tree out of this because if you start with a number of stitches round, which is a Fibonacci number of stitches, let's say it's 21, the 21 stitches splits into an 8 and a 5. Well, the 8 branch will split into a 5 and a 3. The 3 branch will split into a 3 and a 2. The 2 branch will split into a 1 and a 1, all the way down to the base. And this turns out to also be a really good model for how trees grow. The idea that a baby branch might take a little bit of growth before it can start maturing and splitting off into its own growth. And indeed, the Fibonacci sequence has been used to model things like you know, populations of rabbits is, is the traditional one. So this is a very visual representation of the Fibonacci sequence and also uh, a really good model for a slightly more complex version of plant growth than the binary model. So Madeline and I had great fun on our Botanica Mathematica project. We got people from all around the world to make us Fibonacci trees and binary trees and we held a really big exhibition in Edinburgh a few years ago. So that's something that I'm really proud of. Um, then in, in general I really love making uh, images of fractals. So these are not my designs but uh, this is an example of a Fibonacci, uh, sorry, a Sapinski carpet. So the idea is that you have a square and you remove the central square here, so that's black. But then each of the um, squares around the outside, you can play the same game. So you can remove the central square, split it into eight smaller squares, and then go down. So now this square, we remove the central square, and then the smaller squares, we remove the central square. So again, like the binary tree, it's self-similar on a whole bunch of different scales. So however far you zoom in, you still see the same pattern. And this is created using a technique called double knitting, where if you look on the opposite side, you get the same pattern, but with the colours reversed. So that was a really fun project for me to do, uh, and is extra thick if I want to use it uh, as, as a placemat or something. Um, and then probably the piece of knitting that I am most proud of is my giant Sapinski shawl. So just like with the Sapinski carpet, you start with a shape and you remove the middle section and then repeat on smaller scales. So the Sapinski triangle starts with a big equilateral triangle and removes the middle part. And then as you, as you go down, you split your triangle into smaller triangles, remove the middle part. And this is a, a level seven uh, Fibonacci triangle. I keep saying Fibonacci, Sapinski triangle. This is a level seven Sapinski triangle and uh, it took me about four months to complete when I was backpacking around New Zealand. So uh, those are the pieces that I think I'm most proud of and I love showing them to people because doing maths and craft together just invites so many questions as people are making these things and it removes some of the fear and anxiety that a lot of people feel about mathematics. So I hope that some of those ideas have inspired you to go and do some maths and craft, whether you're a knitter or a crocheter or any kind of textile artist, or maybe you just like colouring in and drawing pictures uh, or cutting out shapes and gluing them together. Like, it doesn't matter what your medium is. There's so much to explore in mathematical art, and uh, I hope that's uh, inspired some of you to go and make your own models. So take care, everyone. Enjoy the Math Festival.